I'm going to welcome my very good friend from many years ago, the great Tommy Igo. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. His name's John to Christopher, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, he's got a podcast. He's going to let me in in a minute. I, damn, I've never heard of this guy. Tommy, we're live. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I waited for four minutes for that gag. Oh, like man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. You're welcome. I'm, You're welcome. Had You're welcome. I known you were waiting, I would have cut that my spiel down to at least two minutes, to no more than two minutes. Man, when is he going to let me do this joke? Oh, that was great. It was a great gag. I loved it. I, I, man, I was waiting. I was waiting. You know, how, is it? I, how are you, man? It's so good um, to see you. It's oh. so good to see you too. I know as, as we were saying, you know, in, on the text thread we had the other day that it's, it's been, I mean, I, I don't know when was it like a NAMM show that we last saw each other. I know oh, it had to be, it has to be like, you know, four or five years ago. It had to yeah, be. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been way too long, man. It's great. To see I have you. a, I, it's great to see you too, buddy. I have a picture. I'll send it to you. I might be able to find it and put it. Do you remember we, we had dinner at NAM? This is after I'd left Zildjian. This would have been about maybe six or seven years ago. It was you, me, Peter Erskine, Joel Rosenblatt, Steve Smith, Mike Dolbear at the White House in oh Anaheim. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. And we, and we were we, upstairs, upstairs yes. in that white, that white room with the tablecloth. I remember. Yes. I, I absolutely remember that. That was a great, great dinner. Joe Testa, yeah, yeah, yeah. we uh, we we yeah. drank martinis and drank some good wine, and that was great. And the stories yeah. were flowing. Yeah, that was especially when like especially when Peter gets in that mood and he starts, he can really lay out some absolutely incredible stories. You know, yes. so it was yeah. great. Yeah, it was a great group. Man, I miss those times. It's funny, you know, we were talking about COVID, and you know, and the um, uh, the the profession that we're in, you know, and you don't realize it until it's gone, you know, that like, yeah, you know, the camaraderie, you know, amongst the guys who you came up with, you know, that, you know, uh, you and I, I mean, I'm sure you're going to tell the story. I, I hope you will anyway, because it's one Absolutely. of my favorite ones of like how you started with Zildjian and I was your first signing and da, da, da. I mean, we grew, we grew up together in the I business. Know. I mean, we were, we were children, you know, I know we had know. no business doing anything that we were doing. <laughs> And, and it, that one was so great, man. I'll never forget. I, I, I still remember, you know, the Regatta Bar. I remember, you know, that I invited you to the show. I was like, you know, come in. You were like, I'm coming down. And uh, and I remember like, uh, you know, where I was sitting. I remember the room. And I remember us walking out together to the elevator, you know. Me too, Tommy. And, I can't I, believe. Yeah, incredible. And that was, you know, that it was would be. 1989. 89, exactly. 33 years this summer. And I, and I remember it. And, and I, I sort of embellished the story. I know I embellish it now because you've become, you already were, but you, you're a drum superstar. And so I have the right now to embellish the story. And I'll tell people that there were lightning bolts coming out of your sticks while you were playing that night, if I remember correctly. But, but all kidding aside, I, but this is how I remember, because I'm so glad you said that. This is the story. You had called me during the week, and you said, my name's Tommy Igo, and I play in the New York Voices, and I'm playing at the Regatta Bar this weekend. And the Voices were kind of a new a new band right yeah and uh, but it was up and coming we had grp it was like it was yeah like, grp was like a real thing you know absolutely like, yeah it was like that uh, had that that newness about it you know yeah you know you guys you had you had definitely had support and you're playing the regatta bar which was is still yeah. is a premier jazz club in boston so you were you know you were the real deal now in my own kind of stupidity i didn't make any sort of connection so here's this this young drummer from New Jersey, who's coming up to Boston to play and invites me, wants to get involved with Zildjian. And I, and you got me a seat right near the bandstand. You got me this great table and I'm yeah, sitting I, there. I think I put you right next to me. I was you like, did. Yeah, I'm not you taking did. any chances. <laughs> you put me, yeah, it was, it, no, this was, and it was, I remember I was by myself. I'm sitting there. You came walking out. And the first thing that struck me was that you were, you know, yeah. you're six foot five and six uh, five and a mullet. And <laughs> you're, you're welcome. <laughs> but a handsome devil, nevertheless, as as everyone can see. And you came out and proceeded to just completely. I mean, the band was was fabulous. I mean, the, the band. But you were just so incredible as a drummer. And and then when we sat and talked as a person, and I just remember 
what still to 33 years later, which still strikes me. Now, I'll just back up and say that your dad, the great Sonny o- I- Igo, was a legendary drummer. Woody Herman, um, you know, played, I mean, just a, a legendary a lifelong drummer. lifelong Zildjian, lifelong Zildjian artist, yeah. Exactly, lifelong Zildjian artist. So in the course of our conversation, you were thanking me for coming out. And I said, man, I'd, you know, yeah, I'd love to have you come up and, and pick out some cymbals. And, and you said, yeah, you know, my dad's, really close with Armin and Lenny. And I went, wait a minute, is your dad Sonny Igo? <laughs> and you said, yeah. <laughs> and I went, why didn't you tell me that? And you said, no, man, I, I, I didn't want to call up and say I'm Sonny Igo's kid. I wanted you to come and hear me play and, and, and base your decision on, on my playing. And, and I just thought that was so, that impressed me so much, Tommy. And to this day, it still does. Because let's face it, a lot of people would have just done the easy thing and said, either had your dad call or, <laughs> you know, or just say, my dad's Sonny Igo and, you know, I don't know. It's... Well, you know, it means so much to me that you remember that. And I can't think of anything that would make me more ashamed than riding on his coattails or his name, you know, for anything, yeah. which I yeah. never yeah. did and never would. And, and he would be uh, ashamed of me if I had done that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was never, I mean, he never said, don't leverage your name, you know, at, you know, um, and I mean, it, it just, I mean, the thought disgusts me, you know, I would just never do that, you know, and that's just the way I'm wired, I guess. But um, it's a great, I love that story because it's, it launched our relationship, you yeah, know, and it uh, sure did the, your first signing. And it was my first signing at Zildjian. I, yes. I best mean, of I all. Have, yeah. you did, man, you never told me that. I had no well, idea that you were like, you know, I start, you started the job three days ago. I had no idea, you know. So I've been there was, a couple of months, we yeah. Both, we were both holding our cards, you know. Yeah, it was, that's it was right. great. You know? That's right. It was great. And, and because of that, we have this story now, which is really cool. And you know what, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. We have this story. And, and what made me so proud was, I mean, it was not long after that. I mean, it was, it was like you started to do so many more things within a short period of time. And I remember Armand and Lenny and some of the people at, at Zildjian saying, wow, that was a great signing that, you know, that, that guy, that guy, Tommy Igo that you signed is, you know, like he's making, he's making a lot of moves and he's, you know, you, your name was just out there. And, and it made me really proud that like, yeah, that I, I didn't blow it. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's so, you know, but as an artist, like I took it very seriously. It was like, you know, you know, I get asked, you know, we could talk about endorsements like in the, you know, the bastardization of the idea of an endorsement and what it's become, especially in the drum world, because, you know, no other instrument category has all this free stuff that's flying around artists. I mean, talk to keyboard yeah, players, yeah. you know, them scoring an door it's impossible, you know, right. The culture of drums is it's a very unique thing. And um, the idea of endorsements are um, misunderstood greatly amongst the people who are like thinking that it's like some sort of some sort of anything i know it's yeah nothing yeah. it's it's i mean it's a relation for me it's always been a chance to forge a relationship with an instrument creator and and have and also give them a chance to send me prototypes and you know like i'll put them out yeah. in the field and see whether you know like which i did for zildjian a million times i'm still yeah. playing that hybrid that hybrid ride of Zildjian's like I still play that and it says prototype on it yeah and yeah. you know it became the hybrid and I still have it out there and it just it just goes to like kind of cement what I'm saying the idea of an endorsement and I tell people like don't go to companies with your hand out don't like can I get an endorsement this is exactly the wrong thing to do exactly. it's like it's basically how can I serve you what can I do so Zildjian when you were telling that story the whole idea is like putting eyeballs on the product I mean you guys are I mean, you make instruments and you have endorsements with people because you want to get visibility and you want to show off your product and you're proud of what you make, you yeah. know, and you, and, you know, guys think about like drummers think endorsements, get gigs, like, drum, I know. like there's a, or get anything like drummers think like who don't have endorsements think like an endorsement is the goal. Let's that's like, they're like trying to get an endorsement, you know? And if you, if you think that way, you're not going to get them. And right. you need to think of like a musician, you need to be out in the field, you need to be playing the product in front of eyeballs, doing it for real, and then start a relationship. Don't ask what you can get, 
start a relationship, you know, and then if you do, if you think of it that way, like, what can I provide? What can I provide a company? What can I give them? Not what can I get, but what can I provide them? If you think of it that way, amazing things happen. You're exactly right. I mean, amen, Tommy. And, uh, you know, it, 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 to you and me, it seems so simple, right? I mean, it seems so kind of obvious, but it, it still amazes me. Now, I've been out of the sort of that world now for a long time, but but I still see it happening. You know, there's this sort of expectation. There's this total, like you said, a complete misunderstanding of how it all works. And and what you just said is perfect. In that, uh... <laughs> dog, so the dog is uh, really oh, the... trying to scratch his hotspot, and I just interrupted your story. <laughs> It's going to be a bad, he's under my desk right now. So everybody, this is live coming at you right now. John's going to continue his story. The captain is not going to scratch his wound and we're going to be fine. Oh my God. I can't even know where we're going. This is coming to you very live. That's <laughs> for the future. <laughs> oh my God. To know that joke. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. No, but anyway, but what you just said is so perfect because I used to try to explain that to people that if you're playing in front of people, like you said, if you've got eyeballs on the product, whether it's Zildjian or any company, the, the companies will come to you. You know, if you're giving exposure, you're out there on tour, you're, you know, if you've got a gig where you're doing all these things and people are seeing you play and you're influencing them, then the companies will be interested. But like you said, to, to look at it as the sort of end goal is like to get the endorsement and somehow that's going to get you gigs, it's, it's become so kind of twisted you know uh, it has and you know um as far as that twist it's not really the fault too much of the kids who believe that falsehood it's being sold to them and it's being sold to them by people um who are trying to be oracles in this business and they yeah. are false oracles they are giving advice uh from a place of um <sighs> You know trying to make themselves look like enablers and you know they're mm -hmm. selling basically you know they're selling sunshine rainbows and unicorns and the whole idea is like you know you know get an endorsement and the whole and it used to be about getting drum clinics yeah yeah get an endorsement because then you can do drum clinics that ship has sailed i uh, yes an yeah. invention of a thing called youtube and it has <laughs> never been the same i mean there are still drum yeah. clinics but there are a fraction of what they used to be that's right. You know, yeah. And it is not the events that they used to be either. There are less of them. The bigger ones who do like a show, an event, those, those marquee events, those will always be there and be healthy. But there used to be, and I say this all the time about like the business, there used to be a thriving middle class in all of music, drumming. Uh, there used to be a thriving middle class where, you know, you didn't have to do the marquee events. You could do guitar center and mm -hmm. go out on these tours of like little you know small independent drum shops and yeah, yeah it was like and and zildjian and i know this long because i was with you guys forever yeah is that you know back you know a couple decades ago you would put me on the road for two weeks right and send me to all these different places knowing absolutely 200 people would show up minimum at each one yeah and those days are completely gone because now if people want to see Tommy Igo shred a kit to pieces. They could just search my name on YouTube and there it is. There it you is. used to have yeah. to go to go see a great player. You used to have to get off your ass. Yeah. And now you don't. You can sit on your couch and the information comes to you, but it's still not the same, no. which is why the marquee events, the marquee events where they're like, you know, like a uh, Dromeo. Uh, started one a couple of years ago. We did one uh, up at 2020, you know, Jared and all those guys. And he felt the same way. It's like, you know, the Modern Drummer Festival used to be such a thing. You know, it was like, it was like everybody used to really look forward to that. And it was like a, a gathering point, a central point, right, an right. annual thing. And Jared, you know, to his credit was like, you know what, we're going to need to do that again, you know? And then we did it. And two weeks later, the world shut down, you know? Wow. So it, it, it never got the tail that it really deserved. And it should have been a second one after that, but I'm sure he's going to restart it. I hope so anyway, to have those marquee events, you know? Yeah. Yeah. MD so is talking business. about doing that too, bringing theirs back exactly for that reason, like you say, because, you know, I, I think, I think the world needs it. And I think there's, there's a, a, some faction of people that really do miss the, 
whether it's a hybrid version of a some amount of in person and some amount of vir- some amount of virtual. But, but you know, you're exactly right, Tommy. And and me being an old school guy, I can't imagine like I can't imagine being um, satisfied only with watching you shred on a YouTube video. I'd want to go and I'd want to be there. I'd want to meet you afterward. I'd want to shake your hand. I'd want to ask you some questions. And and I would want to see you like, I want to know what's on your mind. Like, I yeah, mean, like, yeah. you know, because you get questions, you meet, you meet people, you sign their stuff, whatever, you know, yeah. you, know yeah. you just perform for them and they come up, they shake your hand. They usually will tag with a, you know, Oh, wait a yeah, your mic, your mic got a little funny. What the fuck? What the hell? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened. The thing, it just oh. uh, it switched over to a different microphone. Anyway, oh, okay. what I was saying was like you meet people, they come up, they tag a question onto the end of your meeting, you know? And then, I mean, that's those moments are gold. Because yeah. as an educator, yeah. I'm having direct contact with the people who are watching me play. I know what you want to, I know what you want to know. Like, what are you curious about? That's why I've completely changed my clinic format. I have blown up. It's taken me 30 years to evolve my clinics to and constantly massaging and deconstructing and flipping everything around to arrive at a place now that I feel really confident where it has landed. And I go into a clinic without any preconceived notions at all. And I completely let the crowd guide the educational content wow. because every place I go, there's a different thirst yeah. and I have yeah. to be able to adapt. So uh, to your point, yes, meeting face-to-face, eye contact, shaking hands. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Yeah, I agree. And by the way, there's a young drummer who uh, I've been hearing a lot about lately named David Garibaldi. Oh, watching right now we, uh, he's, does he can amount to anything he, i mean i i don't know but i'm, I'm hearing things I about mean, him and he's, just like ugh. and he said he said great session guys your truthful story blew up your internet um <laughs> but i wanted this is a message for that young drummer named david garibaldi that what's his name i'm sorry one more time what's his name it's uh david, david garibaldi. Garib- garibaldi garibaldi yeah all right, I'll make sure I keep my ear out for him. Keep an eye out for him. Yeah. But he's yeah, going to be on my show. He'll some, maybe he'll do something in his business. Maybe. You never know. How long can we keep this up? You know, <laughs> you know, he, you know Dave is a great example. I saw David at Pace It, you know, and, um, uh, you know, I moved out to the, we've done double drums at Yoshi's together. And, you know, yeah. you know, I'm, I love him. Like, I'm like, like love, like yeah. love yeah. David. Like, not, I'm a fan. I mean, I love him. I love him yeah. not only his, his for his soul. drumming and what he gave us, but just him as a human being. Yeah. He's like, you know, he kind of reminds me of Louis Belson. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no one ever had anything bad to say about Louis, which is, can you think about a, such a titanic achievement inside the music <laughs> business? How many people can you say that about? You know, like, yeah, like, yeah. like the, everyone loved him. David Garibaldi is the same thing. He has this generous love of human beings and music and wants everyone to succeed. Yeah. You know, and Super to me, positive and, guy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, you know, fanboying too much, but, you know, drumming is easy. Being a great human is hard. That's where that's where you want to do. And yeah, when you put both yeah, of them together, yeah. like David has, I mean, he is. I'm still. I, I love being a fan of his. I love it. I I love that he's my hero and he's my friend. Yeah, I, I, that's it pretty just great. Makes me, it makes me happy to be alive. That's pretty great. And to play double drums with him oh, has got to be. I can't even like, tell you, man. The first time we played, be- the first time you want to see me turn into like, like I was just like, like. <laughs> Like you can't even, I was just like, I was like, <laughs> like you can't even imagine. Like I was just the biggest goof, like, uh, like, like I was the golden retriever <laughs> that was sitting next to him. And I was like, oh my God, it's about to happen. He's going to count off what is hip. He's oh going to count God. off what is hip. David oh. Garibald, he's going to count off what is hip. And I was like completely losing my mind. And I was just like, oh my God. And then he started and I'm, I'm playing along with, I'm, I'm like ghosting. I'm like, I'm like. Just watching, and I'm watching everything he does. I'm just like, oh my god, this is so incredible! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! And I was just like, I was like non-functional, you know, you know. It was like, 
And I'm like, oh my God. It's like, you know, and I tell my students, you know, have heroes, have, have people that you just love, you know, and then it, it's, you know, and you pick the right ones, boy, you know, the returns come back and, you know, multiplied. Absolutely. Oh man. I, that's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's laughing. He's, let me I tell you like, about the I, man. That, that was my face. Oh. He knows that was my face. Like, <laughs> was, oh, completely, man. You know, I couldn't, couldn't even move, you know? Uh, well, I am going to have him on, whether, David, whether you know it or not, um, pretty soon. Oh, he'll he be, is he'll be here. Yeah, he's, he's, he's my boy. You know, is, and it was great. As I was talking about Pesach. I got to see him like in November, you know, yeah. and it was just great to see him face to face. And, you know, you know, Pesach happened, which was really great. And, you know, yes. yeah. you know, it was, uh, man, you know, like I said, you don't really realize the job until it's gone. It's the same old story, the same human thing. You know, we're just human beings, you know, we're built this way. We just don't really appreciate it until it's not around, you know? And I was just sitting there with David. I was with David and Scott Johnson and, you know, I said, man, this is, this is freaking great. And I miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been, so have, have you started playing out again with your band? In San yeah. My residency guys? is, my residency is restarted, you know, cause I, great. you know, my career, performing wise you know i made a decision to only be a leader and not do sideman stuff anymore in 2006 and um uh so the residency which is going to be in its it's going to be its 10th year coming up uh at yoshi's i know it's a tenant birdland at 10 and yoshi's um and uh that's gonna that restarted last july and it has been uh, a struggle you know it's been a real struggle uh mm -hmm. because of the whole mask thing and like you know uh you know people aren't sure if you're playing like you know it got bad again you know we we had this yeah <laughs> talk about a talk about a tease right talk about a tease in last july uh, you probably remember when the I mask do. came off right yeah and yeah and i was you know uh, you know i was just so happy and we restarted at yoshi's and sold the place out and it was so great and everybody was just like you know hugs and kisses and you know we were playing we played that night like we hadn't played in a year and a half right yeah like yeah. a year and a half at that point and you know an incredible amount of time and we just played like maniacs like we were just like like unleashed beasts you know finally out yeah, of their yeah. cage you know and they were human beings and and it was just one of those magical moments and it only lasted one gig you know and oh. then the august gig everybody was masked up again yeah and now it's just it's been since august and now we're here we are we're about to do our march uh, april hit in two weeks right april 5 and um uh it's now taking that long to get the masks off again so i'm hopeful that this gig coming up is going to feel more like that last july gig yeah. it has been a slog it's been a slog and it's been hard like to stay motivated yeah over this last you know especially last nine months or so right right i know i know exactly what you're saying because there was that like you say that tease and that just sort of kicked the wind out of everybody's sails and then you know but i i, yeah, I feel like yeah i feel like now that um I, you know we're going to be living with this thing yeah. it's always let's going to be looming let's go let's yeah go. let's just let's, let's just go. let's just let's exactly go. everybody you know before the vaccine be responsible. Out, i was like you know before the vaccine and all that stuff i was like you know about yeah. doing the right thing i really was and i and people want to wear a mask it's i don't care that's fine but we got to get going you know i'm vaccinated i'm boosted i'll get boosted again if i have to it's uh whatever we got to live with this we got to we got to live we got to live yeah. with this thing, yeah you know yep. and our school just in california man uh, my my kids have just now taken their masks off like last week for the first time like they haven't been in a classroom wow. they're seniors now and about to graduate they haven't been in a classroom since 10th grade without a mask and they're like wow. talking about like, wow, it's like really interesting seeing my friends' faces and how they've changed. I mean, I, I know it's it's it broke my heart. I was just like, yeah, Ugh. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's terrible. I mean, you know, it's, it's, but, it's but better I, days ahead. Better yeah, days better ahead. days ahead. And better I'm just gonna say, ahead. can't look for, backwards. You gotta look forwards. You gotta right. move ahead. You know, right on. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's it's hard for you and me, and and I think a lot of people just really sort of get their arms around that. You know, my my granddaughter's in the first grade. Oh. And she just took People her mask. They've never been in a classroom without a mask. Yeah, it's just started. Just re like your like your kids just recently was able to you know they took their masks off and everybody now sees how absolutely beautiful my granddaughter is. She's the most oh. beautiful in the class, See, obviously. I mean, and, uh, duh. 
Needless to say, she's I, Fiona. She's, you know, yeah. you know, despite but, no, your DNA, despite, despite, <laughs> despite your DNA, is she is still the most beautiful, beautiful one. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing. So pretty amazing. Just, just yeah. saying. <laughs> Her mother is really beautiful. My well, son, obviously, to, to, to destroy okay. your DNA. So much. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> obviously, there was a battle there, and she won. Uh, I love you, Tommy. I miss <laughs> you like crazy, buddy. Oh, this is. You see, this is just it's been too long. This has been too long. You know? I know. I know. And I apologize yeah. for everybody when I keep blowing my nose. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had like two hot days in California, and everything's blooming. Oh boy. It's yeah. Like, yeah. You know, I was gonna say allergies. Like, yeah. There's green dust like on everything around here. I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so jumping back a minute. So so the voices you did when when we met you were in New York Voices late '80s did that for a couple of years anyway. I did that right? for four years. Four years. Four yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. I've had very long relationships with every artist I've worked with. You know. Yeah, um, that's a good thing. And, yeah, it's like the companies I've worked with. I've, I've you know, I've. Um, you know, I've, I've had some relationships with different companies and moved a couple times, but I've never had a short term relationship. And I've certainly never had any kind of relationship that ended on a bad note ever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, just business things happen, you move or whatever. And I have great long term. And, and it just happened again. It just happened mm. again. Yeah. Hang on again. I don't understand why it's doing that. That is really, really bad. Hang on. Stay right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you hear me yet? I can hear you. Um, yep. It's still. Um... That is really. Why would that happen? There, there it is. Back. There it is. Okay. That's it's really back. weird. I don't know why that's happening. Um, I'm going to um, uh, uh, turn off my Bluetooth. See if that makes uh, that not happen again. Okay. That might... uh, let's see. Turn that off. Okay. Bluetooth is off. Okay. So still, how are we doing? Here? Can you still hear me? sounds good. I can, I can hear you. I my Bluetooth off oh. So it doesn't auto connect to my AirPods. I don't know why I was doing that. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yep. You're good. Um, so, so after that, it, was it right after that art Garfunkel that you did or was that, um, was this, uh, was I, I remember right that in the nineties. Um, uh, you know, let's see. After the voices, um, I went to Stanley Jordan. Um, oh, yes, yes, and yes. did a yes. couple of years with him. Um, yep. You know, touring, we toured everywhere. We did some really interesting countries like Indonesia and stuff. Like, got to really go to some places I hadn't been before. Mm. Um, and then I came back doing, I was subbing on Broadway. I was doing a lot of Broadway, like subbing and stuff like that. And I, I was like enjoying not traveling. And then in 95, uh, that's when I started that 10 year run with Art Garfunkel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So ninety three, I left the voices. Ninety five, and then I did Stanley Jordan for Stanley two years. Ninety five, I started with Art Garfunkel. Yeah. And I yeah. didn't, I, you know, I wasn't one of those guys who wanted to have multiple touring obligations. You know, I was really careful about, you know, I had a very um, strategic, I guess, is a good way to look at it, relationship with touring. Um. I was cognizant of the fact that the road eats a lot of careers and human beings. So I wanted to have a very healthy relationship with it, not an obligatory one. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I only kept one touring artist in my stable at a time, you know? So art and arts was a arts gig was great because yeah. we did a lot of really great big monster 50,000 people festivals and stuff. And then we would do smaller, like you always play like these really um, beautiful theaters, you know, like, uh, yeah. you know, like the most amazing, like Sydney Opera House, stuff like that, you know? And uh, so I got to see the inside of all these incredible venues and, uh, and he never went out for more than six weeks at a time. And he never traveled, or never gigged more than six months out of a year. Mm -hmm. So um, it was, I had, was able to keep that touring with a growing New York studio live presence and education as well. So I yeah. had both yeah. things going on. And again, that was a strategic relationship that set me up for 97, which started uh, the Lion King. Yeah, <clears throat> that's where I was going. I was going to say that that was, a, in my mind, that was a huge game changer. Like, well, was, yeah. was Groove Essentials after that? Am I uh, Guru Essentials was after that. So, it was uh, after that. Okay. It, yeah, significantly actually. Uh, 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 Lion King was it was just a moment in time. It was just um, a, one of those weird moments where the universe brings everything together. Um, 
and I mean talent at every key position. It was just uh, a, one of those moments in time. It'll never happen like that again. It was just, uh, uh, I mean, it'll happen other ways, but it won't yeah. happen like that. It was a very unique you know, uh, blow, it really blew up Broadway. Like nothing had been like that before. No, it was no. like the anti-Broadway show. Uh, Julie Taymor famously hated Broadway. She was an avant-garde theater. That was the director of Lion King. And she like hired all non-Broadway people. And uh, that's why I took the gig. So the gig, you know, uh, in 97, I was touring, uh, I'm not, I was, well, I was touring with a uh, different artist, but a couple different artists, but art. And I was basically playing a lot in clubs in New York and studio stuff. I, I was a the tip, prototypical New York punk, you know, <laughs> two cell phones, you know, the whole thing, and, you know, and I was like, you know, you know, feeling really good. It was like, things were firing for me around there. Yeah, like yeah, everything yeah. was happening. I had sh stuff going on during the day and stuff going on at night. And, uh, uh, this music director, uh, his name is Joe Church, great, great music director. Um, I met playing the Broadway show Tommy for yes. you know, The Who, right? Yeah. And which was amazing. And that was great. And I was subbing on that and just loving the idea of subbing. And it was really just really great. And he got the MD position, the music director position for um, uh, Lion King. And he was able to call in the key positions that he needed. And one of the, probably the biggest one was drum set because it's African percussion. Da, da, da. And I said, no. Oh, I didn't yeah, know I, that. I just, no, flat out rejected it. He was just like, hey, man, he says, okay. and I went, Was it no. because of the commitment that it would take of like your um, time? Or? Well, no, I just said no, because I thought it was going to suck. <laughs> Super genius right here. <laughs> Want everybody to make sure that you take all your advice from Tommy Igo because he really knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah, super genius. Like, I mean, and, um, and uh, literally, I was just like, no. And I was like, and he goes, why? And I said, because it's going to be a bunch of people running around in lion costumes, and I don't feel like working at Disney World. <laughs> and uh, I literally said it like that. And, and he was like, he laughed and said, no. He said, there's this crazy lady named Julie Taymor, and it's going to. He said. He said, it's going to be Huge. like sick. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I said, how long is the commitment? He said, nine weeks. All right. And I went, all right. I can, that's not horrible. That's not horrible. It's not like, like 11 months or something, you know? Right. And then he said, and I said, where in nine weeks? And he said, Minneapolis. And I went, I'm in. Because Minneapolis is a great music town. It was that. Yeah. Prince sure. Club, yeah. Of course. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, jazz, it was well, Minneapolis was cool I had good really good music going on and i was like oh man i was like yeah all right okay i'll do it i'll do it right and you know i mean obviously everybody knows what happened yeah but the uh the history. funny part about it in minneapolis we, we had nine weeks so i had nine weeks to write the book and i had to they basically you know they gave me a sheet of paper it had four slashes on it they had no idea what they wanted so i had to write the book and that was what that nine weeks was for wow. and <laughs> john when i tell you i <sighs> thought i made the biggest mistake of my life when I saw the first rehearsal, like of on stage, like, mm -hmm. so we would rehearse, we rehearsed like 10 hours during the day and then we were off at night and at night they were doing what they call tech, you know, and they would go like 3am. It was like a 24 hour process. And they were working on like the stampede scene and all that stuff. And I walked in and I was like, that's it. I'm going to see what's going on here. And I just looked at it horrified. I was just like, it looked like a first grade musical elementary school level. And I was just, and I just was like, I went, oh my God. I went, oh no. I went, but what I didn't know was this woman who had this vision, she saw what it was going to be. And she was literally creating this new technology to create these visual effects that had not been done yet. Right. And we were seeing what I was seeing and didn't know was the skeleton. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and then as it went along, and then we played the four weeks in, we played our first show. And you, did you see Lion King? Right. The yeah, animals I, down, yeah, the animals come down the road. It's like you're playing, yeah. you're playing all these El great Elton John songs, and it's like it's it's just like you know, big, you know, big, you're playing these, it's just large and immersive, right? And um, animals are coming down to the thing, and we're now so playing a when you debut a show, right? It's like when you author a book, you don't know if it's good or not mm. until you release it, and then the public tells you whether or not it's good. Like you can write a book and, you know, put your heart and soul into it. And it doesn't matter if it sells dozens of copies, 
the public has spoken as, as to its you know place. And same thing with the Broadway show. We've been rehearsing four weeks of your life, eight, seven days a week, you know, and now here comes our first preview performance. And it was like as close as I'll ever get to playing like, I don't know, Jumping Jack Flash with the Rolling Stones in Madison Square Garden last, and, and that cacophony of love coming at you. Like, yeah. like the place just fell apart. Like when they saw the animals coming down and yeah, coming in, yeah, and we we're all and now we're playing that, and people are screaming like this is a Broadway oh, show, like they're, just, they're just like and they're playing, they're like, ah! <laughs> like when they see, like they see the giraffes and they're like they're like like and we're playing and we're downstairs, we're you know we can't see the stage right, we're downstairs and you know and we're just like we're like what the fuck is going on, you know we have no idea and at the, <laughs> we hit the last note and it goes. Boosh, right this thing and i remember this flute player new york guy real sarcastic new york guy great flute player like uh you know wood flute specialist he was going to play 15 different flutes he we hit the last note he looks over at me he goes we're gonna be rich <laughs> <laughs> i'll never forget his face because they were screaming <laughs> And that was like one of those moments. That was like a really great moment. Like, you know, because you oh, have yeah. no idea. You just don't know until you you display yeah. it. And then the public will tell you uh, whether or not you hit a home run or not. Yeah. You know, and that was uh, that was one of the one of the most powerful moments of, of debut I've ever experienced. That's that's what an awesome story, Tommy. And um, oh. and what a, what a success. I mean, that show was sold out on oh, Broadway. It'll outlive, for... us. It'll outlive us all. It'll yeah. I mean, it's just, it was a moment in time. It was yeah. just the moment. It was just a moment in time, you know. And let's and let's take a second and just kind of come back to what you said. You wrote the you wrote the book for that. You wrote. I the wrote drum the drum book. book. Yeah, the drum, the drum book. book. Uh, yeah, it was you know they. Uh, what happened was they in its original reincarnation uh, before I was hired, they tried to make it um, uh, purely percussion with no drum set. All right. And that was Julie's thing. She said she wanted percussionists in the house. This is part of her vision mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. And she was just like, you know, I don't want any Western anything. No Western. I don't want to, yeah. I don't yeah. want to hear, you know, a hi hat or I yeah. don't want to, you know, she's like, I don't want to know sound. I want to hear, I want to be in in the Serengeti. You know, I, 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 I uh, and she was very big on that. You know, that's yeah. her creative flow. And, and they tried to do it without percussion, and it was a disaster. Uh, I mean, without drum set, and it was drum a set. disaster, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're playing Elton John songs with an African influence. You're not playing African music written by Elton John. Right. You're playing pop songs that have African overtones and make that feel, right? Yeah. And you need to have that center to lay the to lay the groove down and then all the African stuff on top of that, right? So they convinced her to hire a guy. And I, you know, it was, uh, you know, I talked to the music producer and they had to sway me to do it. And they said, you have full creative control over the, the book. You know, he said, you're not going to get any writing credit. You're not going to get any money. He said, Disney has spent all their money on everything. Mm -hmm. He said, but he said, you're going to, we want you, you're not going to have to play parts that are given to you. Mm -hmm. He said, we want you to do it, right? And that was fine with me. I didn't care. And um, uh, so it was. That was what the nine weeks in Minneapolis were about. Constant, yeah. flop, you know. And then I had to notate the whole book, and that's what people are using on the road now. Yeah, I was going to say, and that's that is. I was just going to say that's become the blueprint for everybody to use. And, and yeah. like you say, I'll you know, the all cast, yeah, and the cast recording is the you know won a Grammy and the thing and stuff. It's like, uh, you know, that became like yeah, that was like the original stamp. Yeah. You know? And how long did you do it, Tommy? You did it um, fourteen years. Fourteen years. Yeah, I was the principal drummer and um, uh, uh, conductor, uh, right? Assistant conductor, right? Assistant conductor. Yeah, assistant conductor. Yeah, I was. And, and conducting you, is like one of my favorite things. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And you you were able to, at a point you were able to kind of sub it out when you would you could do other things like. Oh like yeah, the that's Birdland the beautiful thing about a Broadway yeah. show. Once you get past the original commitment, Broadway a Broadway gig is uh, one of the most beautiful things to have if you have a hit there are very few hits so i was lucky you know it, yeah. i mean especially because i said no <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you know but having a show is really great uh because of uh the policy where you can sub out 50 percent, and um that allowed me to go on the road with art yeah. uh when i yeah. you know 
felt like going away and stuff, or if I needed to work on anything, I could take time away and do those things, do other gigs or write whatever I needed to do. Right. So yeah. if the show runs eight a week, but you don't need to play eight when you're the principal, you can actually, you know. Yeah. So, which, which I'm guessing allowed you then the freedom to do the Birdland band too. That was, that was, you wouldn't have, I mean, if you couldn't have subbed up the Lion King. The Birdland band, luckily the Birdland band that never intersected with Lion King, the Birdland residency. Yeah. The Birdland residency was on Fridays and it was actually before eight o'clock. So we would play from five 30 to seven 30. And that was what the residency was every single week. And, um, uh, that was, uh, my, probably my, most intense music win yeah like win like like to to make that a success was sheer force of will yeah. um because yeah. i mean no one was there i mean it was bleak in the beginning i was on yeah. life support john so we started so this story is actually i'm going to tell the story really quickly for everybody who's thinking about doing something of their own mm. and being a leader and creating and taking full accountability of a success or failure. All right. So there was, I was playing in this band sometimes, and it was a guy named Lou Anderson who was an old school big band guy. And we all used to play in this band for practice, uh, you know, just to keep our re- reading up. And it was never a serious thing. It was paid like $15. We used to say it pays two bills, a 10 and a five. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, um, you know, and, you know, 15 bucks, right? We did, but we, the charts were hard and, uh, and we could just, let loose you know and yeah. it's fun and it would be like you know it was you know 5 30 to 7 30 so there were like usually two drunks at the bar and somebody's mom that was yeah. the audience right and it was fine and then he passed away <clears throat> and they were going to just x the spot Kill right? it. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know. and i went to them and i said let me have it and they were like why it's a dead carcass and no one wants to be here at that time i said let me do it right and <laughs> we had no, there was uh, like okay now it's now it's my thing with my name on number our key and it's still two drunks and a, my mom right it's like <laughs> and it's as bleak as bleak can be right but there was one guy his name is Merritt Lutz I hope he sees this um, and he was you know he was a, like a marching band guy a, like he was a kid and now he's worked at Morgan Stanley and he saw me play and he fell in love. And he was just like obsessed with trying to help me. Right. And, wow. uh, you know, he would bring people in and I think he did it under threat. Like he was like, you're going to come in. And he's like, or I'm going to fire you, bring your girlfriends. You know, it was like, uh, you know, bring your yeah. boyfriends, whatever you got, bring your friends, he's, come see this guy play. And, you know, he would bring like 10 people and he'd bring 20 people. I, and every week I was working week to week and I was always under the threat of being fired. Right. And there was always this like, and yeah. I would, call, I used to have my friends call the club from all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> and I would, and they would disguise their voice, and they would say, yeah. and they would say, um, uh, "Is Tommy Igo playing tonight? Uh, Friday? I'm thinking about flying in, and I got a group of fifty people. I just want to know if he's going to be there, all right?" And they would say, "Oh, and they would say, oh yeah, he's going to be there." And they would never book anything, but they kept calling, see, "Hey, is Tommy Igo going to be there? Hey, is Tommy Igo going to be there? Hey, is Tommy, you know?" And it was just like I just just said, just keep calling, just you know, just to let them know oh. people are interested. It was like. Genius. Total scam. Total yeah, scam. But it's, but it's I mean, great. It's like I'm like I'm on. I I'm like I'm like I just need time. Give me time. I'm on. A, <laughs> just give me a life. And so, um, uh, it, it, you know, all of a sudden there were one day there were like 35 people there. Ooh, nice. I was like, okay, we are finally not outnumbering the audience. <laughs> this is good. There are more than there are more of them than there are of us. Right. And then, <laughs> and I was just pounding, I'm pounding. I mean, every day, I was just pounding, 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 getting people, putting in new music. I was firing musicians. I was hiring new ones. I was putting up themes. I was like, oh, bam, bam, bam. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> one day, this is like such a jazz club moment. Like there were a hundred people there, right? A hundred people in the, in the, in the, wow. in the, I couldn't believe it. I walked in. I was just like, is it like free martini day or something? It's like, it's, <laughs> This can't possibly be him. And I thought the owner was going to be really, and we laugh about this now, who I love, John, uh, uh, you know, John Valenti, who owns Birdland, great guy. But he came up to me. He's like, he's, and, he, and I thought he was going to go, hey, man, this is great. Yeah. Like, right. like that's what a club owner wants, right? You know, he goes, right, right. He goes up to me, he goes, if this many people are going to come see you, you got to let me know. <laughs> And I 
was just like oh that's I mean, that's a that's a club I'm like, owner. I'm trying to do the calculus in my head of how we arrived there right and he was like and it was true it was like he was freaking out because he didn't have servers you know he didn't yeah. have the staff yeah and I'm like, and I didn't understand like I'm like oh right. and I went I was went I'm like sorry yeah <laughs> I know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it was oh great. my and god it was great and oh, then that's like so in six months we had our first sellout and then after that it like became like you know oh, the thing the thing it was like, the so thing it was like that pounding it was like that pounding wow. that went on behind the scenes i did i didn't know any of that i i came to see you two times when it was the thing when yeah. when you could i could barely get in i was there once during iaje and you oh, yeah. you told you told me ahead of time you said i think you you pulled some strings to get a table for a few of us but mm -hmm. But you know, and, and we understood. You know, we we bought our tickets and stuff. But you're like, it's Johnny. You don't understand, man. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. Like you've got to yeah. get there at this certain time because yeah, they'll give your table away. They'll give yeah. your table away. Yeah, and it was so yeah. unbelievable. It was yeah. so. It was jazz club rules. New York jazz yeah. club rules. Like you know, they're like, okay, it's five thirty and one second. Give that guy the table. <laughs> your table's yeah. fine. <laughs> and I gotta say, there's still nothing like hearing an amazing big band. I mean, the 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 like the horsepower coming from from you guys was like yeah, it was fun. And yeah, you the, especially yeah, it's... like yeah new york big bands they uh the horns are like they play <sighs> from their gut <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of Man. fun to try yeah and we're doing a, a buddy rich tribute on april 5th on uh with my band out here yoshi's so oh, the tradition continues you know yeah so all all buddies like stuff from buddy's book basically all buddies, all, we're gonna do all buddy charts we do i try to do it like once a year you know it's like it's it's fun a lot of people like we do the traditional big band setup because we don't usually do that so i bring in yeah. extra horns we do the full the full monstrosity you know wow and we play uh you know we play a selection of buddy stuff you know Fantastic. which is great it's like going home yeah that's great man so so i want to jump backwards for one second too because i know you mentioned um scott johnson and earlier when you were at PASIC last year and you have a you have a background i mean you you did drumline or drum corps and yeah. and yeah. high school and yeah and oh, yeah it was in the bridgman yeah for yeah the bridgman years. exactly yeah. legendary core and yeah, won yeah, a yeah. bunch of awards and yeah high drums three years in a row yeah so it you great. And it was great and you had already you've been playing drum set before that so you yeah were, i was only playing drum set before that and piano set. and piano and vibes and all that stuff yeah. but i didn't have any of that drum core uh uh horsepower in my hands yet you know yeah and i man i'll tell you the first time i i went i'll never forget that audition the first time i was, I was 15 and i went to the audition and i remember just like like i walked in i never felt so little and so helpless and <laughs> like i'm like i have no business being here next to wow. these these they, they were all throwing down fire it was all this like yeah. and everybody's trying to outdo each other it's a typical drummer situation it was in, and i just was like then i just walked in i walk in with my like five a's i'm like <laughs> 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 these guys are playing with three s you know and i'm like <laughs> and i was like i'm like i'm thinking like oh good we're all gonna play drums together <laughs> right and it's just like you know rah! And, and i just was like oh my god what did i get myself into and it was so uh, great though i was like oh yeah. i forget that man like it was just and i played bass drum that year still still to this day one of the greatest things i ever did that served me musically like playing bass drum in a drum corps like because you're, you're like one string on a on a bass you know, like yeah like yeah you're open, and you're only playing that one string you know that's right. your part and you count on all the other strings to play exactly right because you're only going to make a sound if they're all working together right if five guys playing bass drum and everybody's one string and the, everybody should do that that's, i mean it, it makes yeah. you it makes you such a better musician you you have to listen you have to listen i was you just going to say you don't that. have a choice yeah, yeah. Yep. you don't have a choice you yeah. know you have to listen you know, it's uh, one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. <laughs> that's great. No, I, I think that's so huge, too. I mean, just you have to listen. You know, yeah, I, it's, it's yeah. like that's. I mean, and isn't that the key to everything, really? Yeah. Isn't it? You know, on and off the drums. Right. You know, you yeah. have to listen, you know. Uh, it's, it, you know, I, was, yeah. I'm really lucky I had that experience. I try to give that to my students through stories and exercises and stuff. You know, but uh, I was just really lucky I had that. Yeah. Do you still have a pretty a pretty active um, teaching? 
practice going on? <laughs> yeah, I have a, uh, um, uh, a years long waiting list. Um, and I don't say that uh, happily or lightly. Yeah, I feel yeah. it's, it's, it's actually gotten to the point where it's um, not serving anybody who's waiting on it. And I have to figure out a way to do that. I'm actually going to blow the whole thing up and try to, because uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm not doing any virtual stuff anymore. I'm done. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, virtual education is a poor substitute for being in the room. And for me, education is extraordinarily intimate and emotional. Mm -hmm. And I take it very seriously when I have another human soul in the room with me and they are there to explore their artistry and get better at what they want to do. You know, and every human being who comes in my studio is a unique story and unique individual, and I'm there to serve them. And I cannot do it over a screen, the same level. So uh, I'm about to literally next week, I'm going to, you know, send out a whole new declaration of what it's, what it means to study with me. And it's, uh, so I'm going to blow the whole thing up again because <laughs> I've had enough. I just had enough. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do the virtual thing anymore. No, I understand. I do. I, I, you know, I know it was like a, 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 you know, a necessity for a while there because it was, it was great. Right. It was, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, great. But, it was right. But, and right now I'm done. Right. It was great. And I thank you very much for your service. Goodbye. I'm not doing it. Yeah. That, that's me yeah. talking to zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear you. No, I tell you what, if, if, um, yeah, if you can do it but back in like person this are again, great. Yeah. like virtual has a place. Like this is great. Like this is really great. Right. But Absolutely. if we get on the instrument, like you and I, like if we literally got on the instrument, like it, the sound of a stick hitting a skin and groove and pocket and balance is never going to come to me through this yeah. screen or the sound, the way it actually is in the room. And I don't give a crap how good the mics are because mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. I don't care about your preamps. I don't care about your software. I don't care about how you have your shit rigged. It's never ever going to be the actual intent of the player on the instrument, unless I'm in the room with them. Yeah. yeah. All right. And I just have to, I can't, I just don't have the halfway gene. I don't have that. I don't have the, it's good enough. I know gene. you don't. I, yeah. I don't have that. And I have to be honest to myself. If I'm going to serve my students, I have to put my own mask on first, just like the oxygen. Put your yeah. mask on first, then help others. And you know, virtual. When I get done with when I get done with the lesson, I do not feel good about what I did for myself or for them. I don't feel like I. That's the which is the opposite of how I feel when I'm in the room with them. So to serve, I'm going to actually. I have to be honest, and I can't do it anymore. Amen, Tommy. Yeah. Yep. No, you've never been one to to um, not give the unvarnished truth, and I, I love you for that. Life's too short, Always. man. Yeah. It really is. It's yep. this too short, and you know, it, you know, it's it is, man. And it's this is important to us. You know, I'm looking right. at your kits behind you. You know, and uh, you know those kits tell a story. They also reflect who you are. You know, and I'm seeing the Zildjian gongs and all those things, and the records up there, and the picture of Charlie. You know, and so it's like. You know, this isn't, this is so much more than a round wooden barrel with skins on top and yeah. we hit them. This is, this is, this is who we are. Right. You know, right you, I yeah. look at your drum room and I can literally see John to Christopher behind you. This is our, this is not, it's not an instrument. It's us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how no, else to explain it. No, yeah. that that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I it you know, and it took me it's funny you say that, Tommy. It took me sort of like, you know, my in my later years to really understand that. You know, all the years we worked together when I was in the business side of it. Yeah. I didn't I, I guess I, I I wasn't as sort of intimate with the instrument as I am now, I, at least in my mind, you know, and, and you're right. I mean, it's, 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 well, it's you a reflection have, this, of who you we have are. separation. You also don't, you don't have any obligations to anyone to hit quotas. You don't have to look at units sold anymore. You, yeah. I mean, those things, you know, when you're working and you're making a career, I mean, that's, it's a business. That's right. part of the thing. And then when you get away from that, now you have distance, John, you have distance and you can actually, it's all for you now. Yeah. It is all heart. Exactly. You know, and it's always been hard, but it's a business. It's a That's career. Right. I mean, you know, people, I mean, we're not children. This is a, it's called the music business for a reason. 
you know? And that's one of the reasons my residencies have been successful because I understand that it is, nothing matters unless there are butts in seats. Butts in seats. Right on. These are yeah. jazz clubs, not jazz charities. <laughs> yeah. Butts in seats. They have to be in the black when I perform. They are not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. I have an obligation to keep this venue alive mm. during yeah. my spot. And that's the way I always looked at it. And I have no problem with that. That actually makes me feel good. I want a healthy place. I want, I want to help venues be healthy, you know? And, and you've always liked, and I, and I was going to use the example, like, you know, you created a, a book and a DVD that has become, you know, the Bible, the best selling, if not the very best selling, one of the best selling Groove Essentials. And in all the time I've known you, you, you like the challenge of creating, well, the book for the Lion King, you know, like creating something from scratch and, and having it be a success. And, and that's yet another example with the, you know, the residencies that you've done. Yeah. You know, Group Essentials was, you know, uh, Brick Drum. I, I, God, it's funny. You, you remember I was talking to you, and I can remember what, you know, Regatta, when we, we met, yeah. we're, we're sitting, and I can still see you there. And it's like, and we had this, we were walking. I still see us walking to the elevator. I don't know why that, like, I remember that so well. Um, uh, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I remember where I was when Rick Drum called me. And he was uh, president of uh, Vic Firth at the time. And he was like, right. you know, they had the rudiments poster. And they're like, you know, he said, we want you to do a groove poster, you know? And at this time I had already been, I was like 75% of the way done with Groove Essentials, all right? And, you know, I've been working on it for two years, you know, getting it ready, like really, really trying to write a unique educational uh, manifesto, right? And he called me up and he said, we want to call it Essential Grooves. And I just started laughing, I was like, and I sent them like a picture of the cover. I said, it's a groove essentials. <laughs> <laughs> I said, as long as you're ready, as long, I said, as long as you're okay with using this title, I said, I'll write your poster for you. <laughs> and then it was tied in. And that poster is still being, I mean, there's, I think it was over a half million of them around the world right now. They, they're on like every band room, you know, around the, like around the world. You yeah. know, what's really funny. Check this out. Check this out. So um, when I met Aaron, my wife, she is a, uh, a teacher, right? She was a teacher. Now she's an administrator, but she was a, a history teacher then. Mm -hmm. And I met her. We, I, was, I should say, I saw her and attacked her, basically. Like, <laughs> My name's Tommy, and we're going to go out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, we met at a bar and stuff. So, uh, and it was really great. It was very organic. And, you know, uh, we we're going out and then she like comes up to me and she's like she's like why don't you tell me who you are and i'm like what i'm like she's like she's like i told my band director who my boyfriend is and he and she goes do you know how stupid you made me look because i don't know that you're on his wall she goes, she goes, he brought me over to his wall and he pointed to you on his wall and she's like, that she's is like, awesome. She's like, what else don't I know? You know? And I was, it was one of those really funny moments. I was oh. just like, I was like, I don't know. I said, I, uh, uh. I just posed for the picture. Yeah. I didn't know. I was like, I don't know. I didn't know he had that poster up there. And she's like, it's a poster. Oh. She goes, it's the poster. You know, like, she said, I had to go on Google and find out what you actually are. You know, like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, just, that's like, awesome! Isn't that funny? It was, it, 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 she was so pissed. And she was like, "Oh my!" God. Was like, she's like, "You think for making me look like an idiot? Like I don't know who my boyfriend is." You know, anyway, oh, one of those man. moments. That's a that's a beautiful story. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we still laugh about it to this day. Oh man. Yeah. Well, Tommy, I you know I I I want to be sensitive to the time that I'm taking out of your day here, and and um. We've been at this for an hour. I bet I'm not sure if anybody's even left after all this. I uh, know. No, I don't end, think so. Know, so. <laughs> this is no. This is this is great. We got we got a lot of great people watching. Some not so great people too, but a lot of great. Uh, you ones. know, you know. Hey, it's drummers. What are you going to do? <laughs> but thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you so much for spending time today. And and uh, anything else you want to talk about? It that that upcoming projects or anything or stuff um, we should look out uh, for. Uh, uh, 
uh, you know, all, I, I mean, follow me on social. I put all my stuff up there. You know, I try to run a very transparent uh, identity and uh, I like to stir things up. And uh, so follow me on social and yeah, and we'll have a good time. Uh, you know, I have a text family now, which is kind of cool, which is, I really, really am into because uh, it has the direct one on one relationship with anybody who wants to talk to me. And that's you can find that number. Uh, it, it works in the United States, Canada and Mexico right now. And, uh, right. you know, there's you know, 1500 people who have joined up. It's completely free. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I pay for it on my end. And uh, I literally have a one on one like relationship with people who want to talk to me. That's fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah. It's really, really cool. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm always trying to explore um, technology to serve education, you know, and this, uh, the text fam thing is really, really cool. So it's on all my, the numbers on all my social media posts at the bottom of the hashtags and stuff. Yeah. So if anybody wants to join me on my text family, there it is. That's great. That's great. I've seen it. Yeah. In fact, that I think I didn't realize you had that many people. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's growing. You know, people, uh, it, the gratifying thing about it is that people who join it, don't leave and uh they stay you know and uh, they can you know it's like any you, know, you just have to text you don't like it you just text stop and you're out you know and um uh but everybody loves it you know and i have a yeah. different connection much different connection with that than i do with my social which is you know a mosh pit and you got to be really careful about how you uh about how things can snowball uh and the text fam everybody uh is on their best behavior because it's one-on-one -on -one. Yeah, you know, and yeah. uh, the where the social media brings out the worst in humanity, the one on one texting thing brings out the best. That's what I've noticed. And I'm I, I really like that. That's great. I really yeah. like that. And I and I feel like I'm providing something for those 1500 people that they can't get anywhere else. So join me there if you want to see it. Fantastic. I'm going to join you. I haven't, I've, I've texted your other number, so I'll, yeah. oh, you I'll got, join Well, that. you got the bad phone. So just, get, the, uh, just, yeah, text right. the, uh, join it. I think you'll enjoy I will. it. I'll know? join it. Yeah. I think, I I think it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. It's uh it's a definitely a different way to keep in touch with people that dig what you're doing. And I dig what you're doing. And I think <laughs> and I, I know everybody. Doing, <laughs> Thank you, buddy. All you're right. The well, best. I love you, man. You're I like, love you you're too. like our Baldy. I was saying like, you're like one of those, like Louis Belson is nobody who doesn't, nobody doesn't love John to Christopher. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm humbled. And, and I love you. You know, I, I do. love you too. so much. You know, you're one of the, one of the truly great guys. So thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here with you. Thank you, Tommy. It was an honor to have you today. Thanks buddy. Absolutely. Thank you for watching everybody. Big hand for Tommy. I go, I can hear everybody hands a clapping. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you soon.